Hello and welcome to our second project called Random Tosses. This asks how randomness looks. In other words, can we look at something and determine that there are some characteristics that might allow us to say that it's not a random sequence? So the first question asks you to imagine that you're tossing a coin and record the sequence of 60 tosses. So if you toss a H, a head, then you'd write an H down. If you toss a tail, you'd write a T down. So this is someone who imagined doing that. And the emphasis here, of course, is on the word imagine that you're tossing a coin. So this person wrote down an H, a T, two H's in a row, then a T again, then an H, then a T and a T. And you can kind of scan through this and see that there's not a lot of structure in this, or maybe there's too much, in the sense that there's never more than two of something in a row. I see two H's in a row here, um, and then I quickly see another two T's in a row. And you can see what this person is thinking when they wrote down this. They were imagining doing this. They didn't really do it. They're thinking, you know, a, a head and a tail, they're equally likely, so uh, maybe there should be, you know, not many of the same thing in a row. Now, what's interesting about this is you can look at this and after you do your own coin toss of 60 tosses, you can quickly convince yourself that this is utterly and completely fishy. Now, 60 is a relatively large number for two equally likely outcomes, like the toss of a head and a tail. And what that means is that you're going to get runs. That is, you're going to get several in a row. So let's move on to actually tossing a coin. So I did this, and this is what I got. So I got a tails, and then another tails, and then a heads, and so far you say, well, that looks very much like the beginning of the previous kind of imagined sequence. And then a tails, so far so good, and then a head, and you think, well, this looks exactly like what you'd expect. Another head, very similar to the imagined sequence. A tail, again, you think, Boy, this nothing. This looks exactly like what we imagined it should. Followed by the opposite, and there's two tails in a row, and then now already there's something different. We didn't have three in a row before. We didn't have three tails or three heads in a row, and now we've got three. Oh my goodness, another tails, followed by still another. Does that really happen? And the answer is yes, and then two heads in a row. So let's continue in this way. So four heads in a row, followed by a tails. And then looks like three, let's see how this goes, and then another tail. And then two heads and a tail, what you'd probably expect. Some heads, followed by a tail. But already, even halfway through, we've got much more structure, much more going on than we did before. A tail, a head, a tail, exactly what you'd expect. But that tail turned into three in a row, another three in a row. Um, looks like we've got uh, three in a row going here. Oh my golly gosh, that's now up to five in a row. And then two tails, and let's see how that pans out. Two heads and a tail. But we're not done yet. We're still just three quarters of the way into this sequence. Um, looks like some heads in a row and another run of four. And then some tails, two tails, and a head, and um, my golly gosh, there's a run of four again. So when we look at this, we can see that there is a lot of structure in it. So what I mean by that is there's a lot of runs. So, And what is a run? It's the same head or tail in a row. So a run is a sequence of the same face in a row. The length of a run is how many of the same face are in a row. For example, HHH is a run of three heads in a row. So when we compare the actual coin toss with the imagined coin toss, we see quite a few differences. So let's point out some of those. So here's a run of, let's see, five. Um, heads in a row. We didn't have any run of fives in the previous example. Here's a run of four heads in a row. 
Um, let's look for, here's another run of four heads in a row. I, I need to start spotting some tails. I forgot where those tails in a row were. Here's a row of three tails in a row. And I think there were um, uh, quite a few tails up here. One, two, three, four, five. There's five tails in a row. There are more. Um, I'm just pointing out that there are a lot more runs and the runs are longer. In the imagine sequence, you could say that there are a lot of runs of length two, but there are no runs in the imagined example of length three or four. And I think we had one of five. One, two, three, four, five. We did indeed. Now, that's a random sequence of tosses. When you toss the coin, you'll get something completely different. Now, if you're inquisitive, you may say to yourself, well, what's to prevent that first sequence that someone imagined, a head followed by a tail and pretty much always alternating back and forth? What's to prevent that from happening? And what prevents that from happening is the sheer number of other alternatives where there are runs. So. It's not that it won't happen. It's not that it is not random. It's that it is less likely than a sequence of 60 tosses where there are lots of runs. That happens more of the time. So does something happen like that first imagined sequence? Yes. Could it be random? Absolutely. So what are we saying then? We're saying that it is less likely to actually be a random sequence. So let's justify this in words. It says a run is a sequence. Um, compare the number of runs and the length of the runs for the imaginary coin toss and compare that with the actual coin toss. So the random tosses were far less predictable. Now think about that for a second. When you get five tails in a row, um, it starts to shake your kind of expectation that a tail and a head are equally likely. When you've got four heads in a row, you're thinking to yourself, well, what happened to the tails? So in a sense, it is less predictable. The random sequence was less predictable. Instead of simple runs of one or two, there are many more longer runs. So those happened in the random sequence. There is also randomness in the distribution of the runs. This is just something to be thinking about. In other words, we'd expect more shorter runs than longer runs. But in this particular example, there are two runs of, runs of length three, four, and five, and there's even a run of length six. We'd expect lots of threes, fewer fours, maybe a five and maybe a six, but that's not the way it came out. There's even randomness in the distribution of the runs. That's how randomness works. In general, longer runs are less likely than shorter runs. But in our example, we got as many runs of length five as we got runs of length three. So I'm just pointing out that randomness is random. You can't simply say, oh, that shouldn't happen. What happens in general may not happen in particular. So there's our first example, and I think that'll get you on a great track for the homework, the project in My Open Math. Have a great one. Bye.